In the shadow of Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa, the land of big cats. A brush fire broke out, forcing all life on this earth to flee. After the disaster, the noble warriors who inhabited the region bent over the charred ground. It was studded with stones in fascinating blue and purple hues. They had just discovered the Tanzanite stone in a place that is called Mariani. You have a stone that is beautiful. It is Tanzanite, I think. Yes, this is one of the first, or maybe even the very first, gift from my husband. Since it's my engagement ring, which he bought in the United States from your company in the early 1970s. Starting in 1968, the jeweler Tiffany launched a blue-purple-hued gemstone on the U.S. market. They invented a name for this smooth, very rare stone, found only in Tanzania. Tanzania is an East African country situated between the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn. Its coasts are bathed by the Indian Ocean. The language spoken in the country is Swahili. Part of its economy is based on export of crops, like coffee. The hunting of large game has been replaced by tourist safaris, organized and supervised to avoid disrupting the ecosystem. Indians, Arabs and other voyagers brought by the monsoon have settled the coasts of Tanzania and the island of Zanzibar. They were seeking ivory, precious stones, and metals found in large quantities in the subsoil, full of diamonds, rubies, garnets, and many other treasures. An ethnic group of shepherds have settled on the large plateaus in the interior of the country, the Maasai. The Maasai are natives of the Nile, it was during the 15th century that they migrated to East Africa. The Maasai, known for being brave warriors, believe that all herds of their land belonged to them at one time. And still today, they embark on raids to recover stolen cattle. In song and dance, they honor those who have distinguished themselves by killing a lion, armed only with a spear and courage. It is in their territory that Tanzanite can be found today, the stone now called Sky Blue. Where can we find Tanzanite? In Arusha? In Mererani? Yes, Mererani. Do you want to go there? Thank you. The mines are located east of the Serengeti and the Narongoro crater. In these 20,000 square kilometers, animals do not know the boundaries of men. (laughs) 
The large cats are waiting patiently for the northward migration of thousands of wildebeests and zebras. They are predators. Mararani is the town closest to the mines. In an atmosphere like the Wild West, without police, it grew like a mushroom. The blue fever has attracted adventurers from all walks of life, and it spawns brothels and bars. Here, they do not speak Swahili, but the Maasai language, Ma. Indeed, they hold 95% of the Tanzanite trade. The young warriors, who are in the second age group after puberty, between ages 28 and 35, predominate in this activity. They are the Landis. These proud men have traded in their spears for instruments of gemology. They are known for their honesty and uprightness, but are formidable negotiators. They only trade in Tanzanite. They buy from the owners of mining concessions. Omari is one of them, and he offers them his yield. Intuitively, they recognize the quality, color, and clarity of stones, and quickly see the price they can get for them on resale. Their role is solely that of middlemen, between the mine and the sales posts and exportation. They never participate in the work of the mine. You have a Tanzanite, you have a Tanzanite mine? Yes, I have a Tanzanite mine over there. It's called Goro Goro. I can take you. Okay, here we go. The mines are 10 kilometers from Mararani. The last mile of dilapidated barracks, covered with corrugated iron and built in a hurry around the road. Driven by dreams of wealth, poor people live here in extremely precarious conditions. This climate makes this a particularly dangerous perimeter. Keep on going. Omari's concession is surrounded by wooden fences that protect it from security intrusions. A great tension hovers over the mine that has not produced for several months. Discoveries are rare. The galleries are dug in graphite, commonly used as a lubricant in the industry. It makes the bars very slippery. The perpendicular descent generally reaches 40 or 50 meters. The galleries are sometimes several kilometers in length. Graphite, which consists almost entirely of pure crystallized carbon, is a hard mineral. The only way to dig galleries is with dynamite. In each mine, only a few men with no real training have the right to handle the explosives, but many accidents still occur.
cinco. O Daniel já foi na mão, ué. In a stifling atmosphere, miners flee the blast, which sometimes creates the collapse of neighboring tunnels. Several explosions punctuate the day, while Omari's muscular team recruits 200 men outside of the concession to clear the rubble, blocking the bottom of the mine. After many months of reduced production of tanzanite, these poor people are desperate. The life of this region depends on the discovery of this blue stone. It is as vital as water in the desert. Without it, famine spreads among these adventurers of fortune. Each man is searched to prevent him from bringing arms down into the mine. Indeed, if one of them finds tanzanite, a fight could break out, causing fatal blows. They will work at several kilometers depth to empty the sterile minerals, and this for the paltry sum of seven dollars. For them, it's a small fortune, forcing them to accept any conditions to obtain it. They will form a human chain that will go down into the depths. For 18 hours, like convicts, men will pass thousands of bags from hand to hand, scanning the ground, looking for a purple-blue spark that would make them rich. Several tons of ore will come out of the mine. Above ground, the weather has changed rapidly. The rainy season begins. Significant rains flood the floor of the mine. In 1998, El Nino left a deadly mark on this region. Several hundred miners were buried alive by mudslides. That is why today the Department of Mines requires dealers to put a roof over the holes and to build a wall around them, preventing large amounts of water from entering. The ore is considered sterile, meaning it contains no tanzanite. It is rejected outside the mine. Wanapolo, independent miners, sort carefully, hoping to find some gems. You find stone in your mine now? You have found stones in your mine now? Yes, we found it. It's not a very big stone. What's this? These are tanzanite crystals. Is that good quality? Yes, they have a beautiful color. The color is good. It is one of the best. 
It has a beautiful tanzanite color. Here you can see there are small tanzanites. You can see the color is good. There are different colors of tanzanite? Yes, yes. You can sometimes find very blue tanzanite, sometimes clearer tanzanite, honey brown, but it's all still tanzanite. Yesterday evening we found this. And you know, it's a good sign. It means that perhaps soon we will find beautiful stones. Beautiful stones. Maybe very, very soon. We don't know how soon it can. We do not know exactly. Sometimes it takes months, sometimes just a few days. Or maybe we'll find some today. Oh, even today? Yeah. You can get some tons of it, yeah. At dawn, the ground is littered with empty bags. The work is completed and the mine is cleared and ready for production. Tanzanite is found in soil rich in graphite, through which pass these famous veins. All only in the region of Merirani. It's work, it's extremely difficult. It's the toughest job I know. A miner can take up to 10 years before finding tanzanite. People find it. Tanzanite comes out. Sometimes they find a lot. In general, we bring them to wholesalers. We're supposed to sell the stones to those who are licensed to export. Most of the licenses are held by wholesalers and are very rarely held by the miners. But when the miner is also a wholesaler, he exports the stones directly. He obtains permission to remove the stones and he sells them himself, directly abroad. Most Tanzanite stones find themselves in the U.S. market. When one suspects the presence of tanzanite at the bottom of the mine, Omari goes down himself to control the output. The mine is in labyrinth. It is not uncommon, during an explosion or perforation, that miners find themselves in the tunnel of a neighboring concession. In this case, the owners pour concrete to block the passage. At the bottom, the temperature reaches 50 degrees centigrade with extremely limited ventilation. In this hell, from the first few minutes, the skin is covered with a thin layer of black graphite, on which any cut creates an indelible tattoo. In this mine, one can speak of a veritable fever of the men who work there, the blue fever. Indeed, tanzanite excites them all like a drug that makes them hysterical at the approach of the precious mineral. Some even say that the stone gives off a particular smell when approaching a pocket of tanzanite. Omari permanently employs 60 to 70 miners who work in these cramped bowels. <laughs> It is difficult to find a large tanzanite crystal because nature has produced only very few of these exceptional gems. Crystals exceeding one centimeter are very rare. On the other hand, the dynamite does great damage Explosions fracture and break the crystals, often making their size impossible for a lapidary to work with.
The electric light gives this stone mauve shades. Along the axis at which one looks at the crystal, it may seem blue, purple, or red. The scientific name of this stone is zoocyte, from the name of an Austrian mineralogist, von Zeus. It is usually brown and sometimes green, and is found everywhere in the subsoil of our planet. But the blue color in these crystal gems is a rare gift from nature. There are only 12 square kilometers in Tanzania where there is this rarity. No other deposit in the world produces it. It is the jeweler Tiffany that gave it the name Tanzanite, because zoocyte sounds too close to the word suicide in English. About 600 million years ago, tectonic movements created fractures and folds. The areas of low density formed at the elbows due to folding. From the depths, a fluid rich in hydrocarbons containing vanadium migrated. Substances in the fluid are concentrated and localized in these elbows. Calcium, aluminum, silicon, oxygen, hydrogen, and vanadium have organized to form crystals of brown tanzanite. In the elevated temperatures of around 600 degrees Celsius, the vanadium was transformed. This transformation gave tanzanite its blue color. <laughs> Miners, regularly employed by Omari, work eight hours at the bottom of the mine. But in the case of an important discovery, they can remain 12 hours or more in the galleries. These men are paid a percentage. It can occur that this compensation be given in stones. When there is no production, the owner gives them food. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Omari. I'm 27. My great hope is that of all miners, that one day I'll hit the jackpot. A man can come from the bottom of the mine with enough stones to become rich. Because there are those among us who have found and that offer us help by providing tools. Now I have the hope that one day I'll find some. I'm convinced. That day I'll be rich, if luck smiles at me. Many are the miners who in this makeshift village dream of becoming rich, but it is mostly the Maasai who are doing good business. When they have to buy lots of stones, they come together and discuss how they will find the necessary funds, especially when it comes to buying a large batch of tanzanite. Whatever the circumstances, they keep their tribal operation. Yes. 
So you don't know that is enough. So the more I am ready. Look into the stone. There's a big piece that's clean. Don't say it too loud. Don't worry, Omari doesn't understand Maasai. So you, you sell your stones very expensive, as if money fell from the sky. It's really expensive. You said how much? 1,120,000? Come on, I'm selling them at a very good price. I need some money to reinvest directly into the mine. Okay, it's good. You can take them. It's yours. Here, shake my hand. Once the sale is made, the resale will be at the gemstone trading posts of the nearest big town, Arusha. Many are the Maasai who have made the fortune from these stones. They put their money into cattle, but also, for the richest, into the construction of modern buildings in Arusha. It is even said that one of them stood on top of this building and threw handfuls of bills into the air for distribution to the poor. Arusha is a city of 400,000 inhabitants, whose economy is largely based on the sale of tanzanite. The city grew especially at the end of the socialist regime, after 1987, a period when the exploitations were once again privatized. Eric and Mark Sol have a counter for the purchase and export of precious stones in Arusha. Listen, I have 150 carats. I need 200 for the order. This here makes 22, so 172. I still need 28 carats of small stones. OK, I'll go see if there are Maasai in the waiting room. Are these the same Maasai who came back? Uh, yes, there are three. OK, have them wait. I'll tell you when I have them come in. OK, thanks. Do you have stones? Yes, we do. Welcome. We have some for sale. Do you buy? Want to buy stones? Yes, we buy. What's new in the tanzanite mines? Ah, nothing special. The stones are there? What mine does it come from? Ah, any old mine. Will you not tell me where it comes from? Is it your secret? Yes, that's our secret. Do you not want to tell me your secret? Is that all the stones you have? Oh, there are others. These cost 2,300,000. But the color's not so good on this one. There's nothing bad about this stone. All of it is good. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? 
Aya, kali pun. Aya. You see, despite all the rain we had recently, we still managed to have beautiful stones. Is this the best quality? Yes, that's what they call triple A. It's not a bad color, eh? It's beautiful. I know you've traveled, you've seen other stuff, but for the blue, this competes very well with sapphire and is much more beautiful than iolite. So, Patrick, I don't know if you've already seen this, it sells very well in the U.S. The triangular shape is said to be modern. That, too, is a shape that sells a lot in the United States, and it's starting to work well in Europe, too. It's called the princess. Here, too, with an emerald cut, is nice. Very modern. What's really special with these stones is that we find them only here, nowhere else in the world. Plus, it's a trichroic stone, meaning that when you take a stone and you move, you can theoretically see three different reflections. The color can vary somewhat from one stone to another, but on all the stones, of the three colors we see, there are always the same two, blue and violet. The dichroscope separates the different colors contained in a rock, and which are invisible to the naked eye because they are mixed. The third color may be light green, light gray. Sometimes we even see a red glare. When trying on new sizes, we experiment with stones that are cheaper, garnet, rhodolite, sometimes even with glass, because we cannot afford to experiment with tanzanite. It's too expensive. Once we and the stone cutter have understood how to cut this new size, then we can start carving on the tanzanite. The pool is nearly 12 square kilometers. Everything in this valley, which is 12 square kilometers, and there are no other pools. We lived here as kids in Kenya. Our father was a geologist, who's well known in East Africa. I'm John Saul. Our two sons, Mark and Eric, were born in Nairobi and they left for Europe, for France, in 1974. But they chose to return to East Africa. In the 60s and 70s, I lived in Kenya and Tanzania, where I operated the mines. I discovered a few small deposits, and I started marketing gems, including Tanzanite. There was a tailor called Manuel de Souza, who lived in Arusha. In 1967, Suze found Tanzanite. I don't know if he found them on the ground or if they were brought to him by the Maasai who lived nearby. But I saw these stones come here into my office for the first time. After that, I went to Suze several times. He was working with his old sewing machine. He manufactured uniforms near the door where there was plenty of light and behind, there was a bed. The first time I went to Sousa, he showed me under the bed. There were boxes full of tanzanite, much of which was of gem quality. But then I went a second time. The bed was raised. He slept raised up because there were more and more boxes under the bed. And the third visit, the bed was very high. He needed a chair to climb into his bed. I exported these stones to the U.S. I exported these stones here to the U.S. My father, who was the president of Saks Fifth Avenue, which was almost right next to Tiffany's, he went to Tiffany to see if they wanted to sell it. The answer was yes. Much of the tanzanite is cut in Arusha. Men from India have made it their specialty. My name is Pradesh Pandit, and I am the owner of the Classic Gems Company, located in Arusha. 
I've specialized in the Tanzanite trade for 15 years. After their removal from the mine, these blocks will be preformed into a stone shape. The preform is made using a diamond blade. This serves to give shape to the stone and removed any inclusions. Pre-shaping is, is, is done to give the stone a shape. And this, is, this will be done to remove any inclusions in the stone. And after the stone have been pre-shaped or pre When the stones have been preformed, it will then be faceted and polished. Polishing comes after the stone has been faceted, when it is heated. And after that, those facets will be polished. And after the stone When the stone is heated, what happens is that the brown hue of the stone disappears. It leaves the stone. And then only the blue or purple is left. That brownish tint or brownish shed into the rough stone uh, just disappears or it gets out of the stone and you're left with blue or This is the reason why the stone looks like this blue, blue, purple. Purplish or bluish or blue, purple. So basically, by heating the stone to 600 degrees, the brown tint disappears. The heat does nothing more to the stone than remove the brown hue. goes out of the stone. And uh, the heat treatment does not do anything else. And even years after the treatment, the color of the tanzanite does not change. It remains as it is for years and years. For years and years after the stone has been treated by heat, this, that the uh, the color of the Tanzanite does not change at all. It stays the same as it was, years and years. Tanzanite has got three axes. Tanzanite has three axes, blue, blue purple, when and brown. You the table on when the you place axis, the table on the blue axis, having been blue. carved, the stone will be blue. When, you put when the table the is table placed on the on violet the axis, axis, the stone, the stone will be purple. Then the stone would look purple. When the table when is placed on the brown axis, the, of the, stone, on the, the brown stone will be a purple-blue. Sometimes more purplish, blue, sometimes more blue. Sometimes it depends on the strength more, of the axis in the color. More towards bluish, depending on which axis is more uh, solid in color. The rough which you see in front of me Before here, me, there are two kinds there are of rough stones. Here is a tanzanite in its natural state, uh, which stone, needs not be heated. Tanzanite comes out naturally and do not require heat enhancement. These stones And these do stones must be heated. And 99% of the extracted blocks need to be heated beforehand. Tanzanite stones do require heat enhancement. The three best qualities of tanzanite are triple A double A and A. Because of this... It is because uh, of its exotic appearance and the fascination that the stone exerts on me uh, dragging, that I've specialized in tanzanite. Uh, by the look of the stone, th that's the reason I have specialized in tanzanite. Most of the stones most of the stones that I buy, I cut and I mainly export to the United States, but also to Germany, Hong Kong, Thailand, and some other European countries. But my main market is the United States. 80% of my production goes to the United States. 80% of my production goes to the United States. The majority of tanzanite is marketed in the great annual gem sale in Tucson, Arizona. In the U.S. market, it is the second best-selling bluestone after sapphire. Tanzanite has suffered a decline in international markets in the past two years. This was due to a rumor that sales from the stone had funded Al-Qaeda. The rumor has since been officially refuted, which has allowed it to resume its place.
In Arusha, the starting point of great luxury safaris, small shops will send brokers onto the street to trap some foreign newcomers. It's mostly women who are responsible for this work. The owner entrusts his gemstones to them and sets her prices. The stones sold will be paid back to him, and the difference between the sale price and the fixed price will be the compensation of the broker. I like this cut. One hundred dollar and fifty a carat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stones that are not sold at the end of the day will be returned to the owner. You can find everything on the streets of Arusha, except for Tanzanite. <laughs> All the blue stones are reviewed, such as cordyrite, iolite, that can be confused with Tanzanite because of its color. The price is extremely low because it is a very common gemstone. This scam is also very common for that matter. The brokers also offer imitations made of blue glass with no inclusions whatsoever, but whose color is very close to that of tanzanite. The only way to tell in this case is to use a device that can determine the refractive index of the stone, which is the ratio between the speed of light in the air and its speed through the gem. This index is specific for each gemstone. In this case, this stone has a refractive index of 1.52. It cannot be tanzanite, since tanzanite has an index of between 1.691 and 1.7. For tourists unaware of the secrets of gemology, it is extremely dangerous to buy on the street. The best solution is to go to stores where specialists engage their experience and responsibility. When you are ignorant or ill-advised, deals in precious stones are sometimes very expensive. As you can see, one of the specificities of tanzanite is that every stone is different. Some are blue, others purple, and others are more purple than blue. Some will even have a lot of purple, more than blue. The darker ones are better quality? Yes, they are what the market prefers. Here, look. This is what is called an emerald cut. There you go. Fish. Nice. Yeah, very nice. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. It's a nearly six carat stone. The stones are paid by weight. One carat equals 0 0.2 grams. What is the price of this one, for example? It costs $2,200. And do you know what the price would be to get it set into a ring? Uh, no. no. What, I recommend, what I recommend is that you look at different models back home and, you choose, and choose a setting that fits exactly what you like. And then, you go to see a local jeweler, then you can go see a local jeweler and have it made. A, uh, ring. The ring you bring back from Tanzania will be unique. The majority of tanzanite is not sold in its country of origin. It is exported. Officials from the Ministry of Mines visit the trading posts to complete the necessary formalities for export. After checking the number of stones and their weight, they are enclosed in a special box. We'll be forced to close this package well.
Since there are a lot of bags, we'll have to put them properly into the box. Are there too many? Yes, there's a slight problem here, but we'll settle it. So three bags. Before leaving, do you want me to sign the documents now or later? Uh, sooner would be better. The box is sealed by officials from the Ministry of Mines and will no longer be opened on Tanzanian territory. Four hundred and twenty three thousand shillings. The exporter will pay taxes based on the declared value of the stones. Okay. The transport of the stones is the responsibility of the exporter, and it is made under their responsibility. Once at the destination, formalities and taxes will be acquitted in accordance with the local laws of each country. Bonjour Daniel, ça va? Très bien. Bonjour madame. Ça va, ça va. Là un petit peu de douane. D'accord. Merci. Tenez. Bon madame, qui vient? In France, a freight forwarder, who is a merchant of precious stones, is in charge of the customs clearance for the exporter, thus simplifying the formalities. Donc c'est pour euh, le principal obligé DH Pia. The customs office specializing in precious stones is notified and the box is sealed again. If customs does not show the desire to control the goods from the freight forwarder in the next hour, the box can be opened and transactions can begin. Here, Eric. Tell me, in there will we have the famous tanzanite we expect? The one with the pillow cut that the client had requested? Yes, yes. Tanzanite. It's very beautiful. It's a ring created by Paloma Picasso, especially for you. Your mother was adamant that you have a Tanzanite ring, because her engagement ring was Tanzanite. How much longer will the earth give this precious gem to the Maasai? Some say it will disappear when large animals no longer walk the earth.